What's up everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm going to cover kind of a more of a Facebook rant. So this is something I've been seeing a lot of uh, that's been really bothering me lately is on Facebook and social media, Instagram, YouTube. I see a lot of uh, inexperienced keepers and I'm not saying I'm an expert here, but a lot of inexperienced keepers giving some really bad advice. And in the social media world, it seems like whoever posts the most, whoever talks the most, all of a sudden becomes this expert. Whether they know what the hell they're talking about or not, everybody says, oh, trust this person. You know, I, he's the admin of a group or, or trust she's the admin of a group or this person's got, um, you know, whatever it is. They've got a boa, so they must know what they're doing. And uh, they're, all they're doing is repeating something that they read somewhere or something they feel by kind of their gut. It isn't really a tried and true method. It's just something that they feel, hey, this is, I read this article, so it must be true. And uh, it's not really backed by long-term keeping. And that's something that's really been bothering me lately, specifically all these super skinny boas I'm seeing. So uh, there's this new kind of method and feeding guidelines. And in a way, it's good because for a while, all you saw were very obese boas. People are feeding these things weekly. And you can't really do that to a boa. It um, doesn't really have anything to do with their digestive system or anything like that. They're, um, maybe it does scientifically. But if you feed a boa weekly, they're going to put on weight, at least if you're feeding them something that's the appropriate size. So boas, I made feeding videos on boa feeding intervals. If you're looking for a feeding interval that I use, go watch those. But I see a lot of really bad information getting floated around, specifically this feeding guideline that I keep seeing getting posted everywhere. Something like every, uh, for, for the first six months feed, every 10 to 14 days, and then for the, from six months to a year and a half, or from, from a one year plus every two weeks, from two, from two years on, Feed them every three to four weeks. Uh, after three years, feed them every six to eight weeks. If you feed your snake every six to eight weeks, you're going to have a really damn skinny snake. And that's what I'm seeing a lot of. So these people are posting things up, saying, here's the guideline you're going to follow. And, uh, and I've noticed people are like becoming paranoid about getting their bow as fat. Uh, snakes are just like humans. You can get fat, you can lose weight. You can be skinny and you can put on weight. But what I'm seeing is there's these people are putting this just really shit information out there and uh, everybody's just eating it up, loving it, buying it and doing the same thing with theirs. And as a result, all I'm seeing lately are these really skinny snakes. So when you see an actual healthy snake like this guy here, this is a perfect weight right here. When you see a snake like this, people are saying, oh, it's fat. Well, I mean, this snake, I think people would say is perfect. But uh, but you see anything a little bit bigger than this. Maybe it's a female, maybe it's a snake that already ate a male and has some uh, has to use the bathroom and it's got, a, it's got a fat tail, but you look at the top of the snake and it's perfect. People have become, like the new, the new thing on Facebook is pointing out whether you're feeding too much or too little or, or what the hell people are doing and nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. They just don't. Um, you know, there, there's some good thought process behind that. There's some good science behind that about how boas digest food slower. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they need to eat every six to eight, eight weeks. You feed a boa every eight weeks. If you're feeding the appropriate size male every eight weeks, you're going to have a damn skinny and emaciated boa in about a year, assuming that they were a healthy or semi-overweight snake to, be, to start with. Uh, it's just not enough. And, and if you're not seeing a snake after, if you're feeding them every eight weeks and it's not getting skinnier, then you're feeding something that's way too large and is putting a massive amount of stress on the digestive system of these animals. Um, these are animals that are built to survive. They're built to breed. They're built to eat. And, and they're built to go long periods without food. But like anything, consistency is what's going to hurt the animal. So if you're consistently feeding every six to eight weeks, you're going to have a really skinny snake. Now, six to eight weeks during breeding season for a male or a female, that might be possible. Uh, but if you're feeding that all year round, you're feeding your snake eight weeks, so six, six times a year, that's, uh, that's just not enough. It, it really isn't. And I am getting kind of tired of seeing this, uh, this, these feeding charts that keep getting sent around, being passed on to new keepers. They're going to end up with either dead snakes or, or just really unhealthy snakes and a lot of health problems. Um, this is a really new thing I've started to see lately, and it's getting pumped everywhere by a lot of people who have been keeping boas for a short period of time. Or what they'll do is they'll say, oh, I've been keeping boas for 40 years. I had one when I was 10. I sold it a year after I had it. And I haven't had a snake for 35 years. I just got a couple more a few years ago. That's not 40 years of keeping. That means you kept it for a year when you were 10 years old. And now you just got back into them. You know shit. You know nothing about what you're doing. You know nothing about keeping snakes. You know nothing other than what you've read in a book. 
which is good information, but a lot of those books, as I said in my very first YouTube video, the point of this channel is to break the bullshit. A lot of the people are not going to tell you what they're doing because the backlash that they get. And, uh, and things are always changing. We're always learning new information. How we kept things 20 years ago is not how we keep things now. And I'm sure in 20 years from now, it's not going to be how we keep things either. So this whole feed and chart bullshit is, is that's all it really is. And it's, um, and I'm just I'm just getting tired of seeing all this dumb information floating around and these really skinny looking boas. This is how a boa should look. This is actually a skinny boa. This boa should be fatter than this. This male's been breeding and hasn't eaten in a while. So this is like as skinny as you would want to see a snake. Take a good look at this because that is skinny. That is too small for a boa. I can see this kind of ridge right here. People need to open up their eyes and start thinking on their own. Just throw away all these feeding charts. Feed your snake weekly. If it looks fat, then, then do it every bi-weekly. If it still looks fat, go every three weeks. As a general guideline, watch my old videos. I just made a couple videos maybe six, seven months ago on how I feed my snakes. Those are good guidelines. If they're getting fat, slow down. If they're getting too skinny, speed up. It's really that simple. I mean, I don't know when we got into this this age of just read what somebody else says and repeat it to a million other people and all those other people do nothing for research on their own. They just take it for granted and they just they just take it at face value. Um, the other thing I see is is you know these people who it almost seems on Facebook and social media is the more you post, the more you talk, the more people listen. Whether you know what the hell you're doing or not, I could make a million posts in in some group. And all of a sudden, I'm the expert when I know shit. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying I'm an expert, but I've been keeping these things for a long time. And I've learned a lot of things uh, the right way and the wrong way to do things. And I see people repeating the wrong way. And, uh, and it seems like nobody really wants to listen because some Facebook admin who's just got back into snakes or who's kept snakes for a couple years, they said, they said to do it differently. And that's fine. If you want to do it differently, I don't care about your snakes. If you want to kill your snakes, if you want to have unhealthy snakes, snakes that won't breed, snakes are going to have a hard time breeding or may breed and then die on you, by all means, go for it. I don't care. It's not my animal. It's yours. So I'm telling you what I do. Hopefully some of you guys will listen and, and trust the, the things I'm telling you. And don't even trust what I'm telling you. Try it and see what happens. Use your own imagination or use your own uh, research and put some logic behind this. Do you really think these snakes consistently go eight weeks in the wild without eating? Do you think they eat six times a year? Uh, do you think that it's always a constant 90 degrees? Of course it's not. And, and of course they're not going to be eating in that interval. They're going to eat whenever they find food. And they may go periods of eight months, uh, or, sorry, of, of eight weeks or even longer. They might go six months without finding a, a meal, especially in some of those seasons where, where food kind of dries up. And then other times they may eat two, three meals in a row. Um, so I really just want to make this to get you guys to think, uh, stop reading what people say. And the first answer that you like, decide that, that that's the answer you're going to go with. Read everybody's answer, then go do your own research, go try it, try different things. And, uh, if somebody hasn't been keeping these things long enough, really hasn't been keeping them long enough. Why are you listening to them? Why are you listening to somebody who's been keeping snakes for three years and they're just a Facebook admin? I'm not saying they know nothing. They have some very good experienced keepers out there who've been keeping things for a short period of time. But uh, it, that doesn't necessarily mean that they know what the hell they're doing either. A lot of these things you're going to see long term. You're not going to see these things in a couple years. You're going to see these things 5, 6, 10, 20 years down the line is when you're going to see the health problems and the things that you're doing wrong based on this shit advice that you're following. Um, so that's kind of what I'm trying to get at is if somebody's telling you with 20 years experience versus somebody that has three years experience, but they speak loudly on social media, real three years experience. I'm not talking somebody who's, um, or real 20 years experience. I'm not talking somebody who had a kid, had a, had a snake when they were a kid and just got back into them. That is shit. That is nothing. Um, it, it's, you know what you know, but those people should be listening to the more experienced people and trying it. And people are so resistant today. They're just, um, they just don't want to listen. They don't want to try anything new. Everybody thinks they know what they're talking about. Uh, everybody thinks they're an expert. As long as they post a lot and they get a lot of likes, give you a little heart reacts on Facebook. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. Oh, you're fantastic. Thank you so much for giving me that shit advice. Um, start thinking in your own. There's a really shit, shit advice on Facebook. There's uh, people that really, that are, that are trying trying to educate, but they don't know enough themselves to educate, and they're not listening to the people who, who do know. 
Um, and I'm not even saying listen to me. Again, go do your own research. Go try it out. Uh, just because it's scientifically, uh, certain things meet what they should be uh, in terms of temperatures. You know, humans, let's take humans, for instance. You think we're good in Antarctica? You know, we got to wear these bundled up bullshit clothes and, and it sucks. So just because a snake is from an area that sucks doesn't mean that's where they want to be from. Just because a snake in its natural environment is uh, is naturally going into this 95 degree weather or this it, that at night it can go down to 70 degrees, that doesn't mean that that's where they want to be. That doesn't mean it's good for the snake. So use your own logic and think for yourselves. These are reptiles. They're cold-blooded. Just like, uh, you know, rattlesnakes or or other things in, in some of the higher areas that hibernate, um, if you keep them at a constant temperature, they don't hibernate. Uh, these things adapt to what you need them to do. If you're trying to breed, it's all about making them do what you want them to do. And uh, in, in an environment like, like here or in captivity, we can make them do what we want them to do by fluctuating their environment. Um, you know, there's no, I got to keep this snake at 90 degrees all year round. The hot spot's 90, the cool end's 75. It's not how it works in the wild. These snakes will move where they need to be, and they'll go where they need to be. So stop listening to the shit advice on Facebook. Do your own research. Ask a bunch of questions on Facebook. Get 20 answers. Every, you, you, you get 25 answers, 20 people are going to have a different one, and a couple are going to overlap. And, um, and then do your own research from there. So I don't know if I even had a point of this post, other than I'm pissed off about all the bullshit that I've been seeing and all the, uh, the people who are trusted on social media platforms, and they're really don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, it's it's time for you guys to wake up and start doing the research on your own. So, again, I don't know what the point I had of this video, but make sure you keep subscribing. I think there's a little bell there so you get notifications when I post some new videos. I'm going to try to get more on top of these things. Uh, my breeding season is going fantastic. I just took about 30 snakes for an ultrasound. Every one of them have great follicles, about 10 millimeters. So they need a few more months, uh, and then they'll start ovulating. So do your own research. Subscribe to my channel, and um, we'll keep going. If you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. Uh, shoot me a message on Facebook, Instagram, Jason's Exotic Reptiles, pretty much everywhere. Um, email, whatever it is. Shoot me a message. I'll try to cover the topic in a video if I can't cover it in a, in a quick response. So appreciate the follows. Appreciate the watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up. It counts. It matters. And uh, thanks, you guys, for watching.